<laughs> hey kids, Pastor Doug here once again for another lesson from the Bible. I'm so glad that you're here to join us. As usual, I just want to remind you that you can go to faithville.com to do all sorts of things like write in and download the activity sheets. And also, we want to encourage you to hit the subscribe button in the description below to help support us and make sure that we keep these videos coming. All right, we're about to get started. kids. I'm sure you can see what I'm doing. That's right. I'm swimming. Wow, we're underwater. I love to swim. But you know, it took me a long time to learn. Learning to swim isn't easy. You make lots of mistakes and, and it means you have to be very brave too to, you know, put your head underwater and do all those things. Plus, it really helps to have a good teacher. You know, learning to swim reminds me a little bit of learning to follow Jesus. You see, in both cases, it helps to have a good teacher. And it also helps to remember that we're not going to get it perfect on our first try or our second. In fact, when it comes to following Jesus, we can never really get it perfect. But there's good news. You see, God is a God of second chances. And third and fourth and fifth, He gives us so much grace. Grace is when he gives us these other chances to continue to, to do better, to try and learn to follow him a little bit better each time. God's grace is important, and we all need it. There's a great story in the Bible about God's grace. It's got a man named Jonah and a great big fish who swallows him up. Come on, let's check it out. Wait, wait, wait. Was he talking underwater? That's not even possible. I think, is it? Hmm, I don't know. I'll test it out the next time I'm at swimming lessons. Wow, you take swim lessons? Yep, I'm a guppy, second class. Ah, oh, that sounds pretty advanced. It is. I'm already mastering blowing bubbles. No way. You gotta teach me! Sure. All right, everyone. Let me tell you the story of Jonah, one of my favorite stories in the Bible. Jonah was a prophet, which meant that it was his job to deliver God's messages to God's people. Yeah, it's me, Jonah. Now, of course, this almost always meant that he would be delivering messages to the Israelites. But on one occasion, God had told Jonah to deliver a message to the Ninevites, who were some of Israel's greatest enemies. Hi. Hello. Hello. On your way to the temple? <laughs> the temple. What are you, a prophet? Let's get out Jonah of here. Jonah couldn't believe it. Deliver a message to the Ninevites? They were the enemies of their people. What's that? Ninevites? I, I think you mean Levites. What? I can't go to Nineveh? Jonah didn't like the people from Nineveh. He had remembered how they had mistreated Israel for so many years. And so instead of obeying God, Jonah decided that he was going to do things his own way. He found a boat that was going to a city called Tarshish. And he jumped on that boat thinking that he could run away from God. Almost. There you go. Easy peasy. So Jonah got aboard this ship, heading for the distant land of Tarshish. And so far, it was going pretty well. Smooth sailing, <laughs> literally. In fact, things were going so well, Jonah was able to take a nap in the boat while the sailors did their job. But this didn't last. 
You see, there was a terrible storm sent by God that was rocking the boat to and fro, so much so that it was about to sink. The sailors were terrified. They started throwing cargo overboard, doing anything they could to keep the boat afloat. The next thing they did when that didn't work was to wake up Jonah. And they asked Jonah to pray and wondered if he could do anything at all to help them, maybe to save them from this terrible storm. Jonah said that he was a messenger from the one true God, maker of the heavens and the earth, the land and the sea. <laughs> and also, by the way, he said, I'm running away from that God. Kind of crazy when you think about it, right? Well, the sailors had cast lots to find out who had done something wrong, whose fault it was that they were now in danger. And guess who they discovered it was? That's right, Jonah. So they apologized, but also decided to throw Jonah right into the sea. Wait, what? As Jonah sunk down into the sea, God sent a great big fish to swallow Jonah whole. It was here that Jonah decided he was going to stop running away from God. That in fact, he would deliver God's message to the Ninevites. So God commanded the fish to spit Jonah out onto dry land. Whoa. Now when he got to Nineveh, he had to deliver a uh, not so good message. Oh, hey, uh, you should repent. You see, Jonah was supposed to tell the Ninevites that unless they stopped doing the things that they were doing, and unless they stopped choosing to go their own way instead of live by God's ways, that God would punish them. That they would feel God's judgment and wrath upon the whole city. All right, that's done. He left the city and decided to stand out on a hill and watch as God judged them. Just wait right here. In fact, he even hoped that God would judge them and destroy the city. But that's when something amazing happened. Thanks for the warning. We'll do better. Hmm? Something that Jonah never would have imagined. The Ninevites repented. That means that they changed the way that they were behaving and they asked God for another chance. They wanted to do things right. They listened to Jonah's message. Jonah couldn't believe it. Now the Ninevites, his greatest enemy and Israel's greatest enemy, were going to receive God's forgiveness? This actually made Jonah very grumpy. As he sat on a hill under the hot sun, awaiting God's judgment on Nineveh, he, he talked to God about how angry he was. And then God caused a plant to grow up over Jonah very quickly and shade him from the sun. One nice thing. Only then, God, in order to teach Jonah something, caused the plant to shrivel away. Are you kidding? <laughs> and then God talked to Jonah, explaining how, just like Jonah appreciated the plant, God loved and appreciated the people of Nineveh. He didn't want to see them destroyed, just like Jonah didn't want to see the plant destroyed. Well, that's the story of Jonah. I hope that you enjoyed it. And I hope that, like Jonah, you can recognize that we all need second chances, and God is very faithful to give them. Now that's a story! Eaten by a whale? Can you believe it? <laughs> yeah, and spat out too! That was funny! He must have really stuck by the time he got to Nineveh. I tried running away once when I didn't want to clean my room. Oh yeah? Yeah. Only made it as far as the end of the street though. I got hungry, had to go back. I love the story of Jonah. It's one of my favorites. Jonah is just so relatable. He's a prophet, but he doesn't always get things right. He needs forgiveness and second chances. Kind of reminds me of myself, really. I've got an awesome friend, Pastor Susie, who's going to show us more about this Jonah story with a terrific craft. Hey, Pastor Susie. Thanks, Pastor Doug. Hi, everyone. My name is Pastor Susie. I'm so glad to be with you guys today learning about Jonah and the whale. Imagine if God only gave you one chance and then you were out. One strike, you're out. That'd be pretty rough. I would have been out a long time ago. But God loves us so much 
that we stay in his family. He gives us second and third and fourth and a gazillion chances. He never stops loving us and he never stops chasing us. And that's the message of Jonah. So this is what we're making today. We've got our wonderful whale and inside of our whale is Jonah and some fish as well because whales like to eat fish. So the first thing we're gonna do is gather our supplies. Here's what you're gonna need to make our craft today. First, we need the man of the hour himself, Mr. Jonah. Now you can get this Jonah from faithville.com or if you're a pretty good artist, you can make your own Jonah. We're gonna need some dark construction paper. We're also gonna need some different colors of construction paper. Of course, we're gonna need our balloon. Nice blue balloon there. And we're gonna need a funnel. But if you don't have a funnel, what you can do is cut the top off a pop bottle and it will give you the same shape that we need for today's craft. So we've got our funnel. And then we're gonna need scissors and tape. Once you have all those things, we are ready to make our craft. So step one, the first thing we're gonna do is cut out our Jonah. So we're gonna take Jonah and cut him out of a piece of paper, and then we're actually gonna cut him out a second time onto a black piece of paper. And the reason we're gonna do that is so that we can see him inside our whale. So to stick Jonah onto our paper, I'm gonna use a little bit of tape and then cut him out. So now we've got our Jonah, it's time to cut out our fins. And we're gonna cut that out of blue construction paper. If you're gonna cut out two of the same thing, you can fold your paper in half and only cut out one, and then you'll get two of them, see? So there's our two fins. And now we need to cut out our tail. So we're gonna fold it in half and cut out our tail. And there we go. The last thing we need to cut out is our fish. So we're gonna cut out four goldfish. We're gonna take one piece of orange construction paper and we're gonna fold it into four. So first we fold it in half, and then we fold it in half again, and then we just cut out one fish. Here we go. We have one, two, three, and four goldfish. So now we have all the pieces that we need for the inside of our Jonah. So we're gonna grab a balloon and we're gonna stretch it out really well. And we're gonna get our balloon onto our funnel. Now this is kind of a tricky part. You really gotta work your fingers in there. Get as far down as you can and pinch it over top of the funnel like this. Now we're gonna put our characters inside. So we're gonna grab our Jonah and we're gonna roll him up. Now you're gonna roll him up kind of tight, but not super, super tight. And then you're gonna stick him in our funnel. Now once Jonah's inside, we've gotta work at unwrapping him. And you'll have to just kinda of use your fingers here, but you'll be able to feel Jonah. It's gonna look just like that. And now we're gonna add our fish inside our whale. So we're gonna do the same thing with each one of these. I'm gonna roll them up just a little bit, get them inside our whale. Okay, now we've got all our fish and our Jonah inside our whale. So now we can pull it off of the funnel and blow it up, tie it off. So now it's time to put on our fins and our tail. So we're gonna grab our two fins and we're gonna tape one to each side of the whale. One on this side. That side. And then we gotta add our tail. So we're gonna take our two halves of the tail and we're gonna tape them together around the back of the balloon. You might need a second set of hands. And I'm gonna put one more piece at the top. And now the final touch, grab a marker and add a face to your whale.
So there is the face of our whale. This guy's a happy whale because he got to eat a human and four fish today. He's very happy. You can make your face look however you like. Oh, that looks fun. Yeah, I wonder what else we could put in a balloon. Yeah, like, like my toys. Oh, or snacks. Or my socks and underwear. Huh? Think of all the drawer space I could save. Well, now that I've got two, maybe I could share with somebody else. Hey, Pastor Doug, here's a whale for you. Oh, wow. I can see the Jonah. Thanks for making it. Kids, I hope you get to enjoy doing that craft too. All right, now it's time for our Bible verse though. Come on, follow me. Look at your Bible. <laughs> All right, we're going to look up Psalm 145, verse 8, because that is our Bible verse. Now, let me help you find it. It's in the Old Testament, so start with Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st, 2nd Samuel, 1st, 2nd Kings, 1st, 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms. All right, it's pretty deep in there. Once you find Psalms, it's a pretty big book. You want to go all the way to the big number 145. That's chapter 145. And then find the little eight. That's verse eight. All right, let's read it together. The Lord is gracious. He is kind and tender. He is slow to get angry and he is full of love. Aren't you glad that we serve a God who's so gracious and compassionate? I know that I am. All right. Let's test our knowledge of what we learned today with our game show. <laughs> All right, everyone, welcome again to the What Did We Learn game show. That's right, the only game show at the end of this lesson that asks, what did we learn? All right, and our contestant today is none other than the amazing robot, Rusty. Welcome, Rusty. Greetings, Doug. Thank you for having me on the show. I am so excited to be here. It has always been a dream of mine. Okay, okay, that's enough. And our question today is, when God decides to show someone grace by giving them a second chance, that is known as A, being nice, B, obedience, C, pulling a Jonah, or D, grace. Rusty, you've got 30 seconds on the clock. Yes, Doug, thank you for the question. However, this is a simple matter of processing, processing, processing. I have come to the conclusion that the answer is D, grace. Wow, that, that was fast. He's answered D, grace. Let's hear it. Whoa, we have a winner. Rusty has never won anything before. You have done a fantastic job of Yay. answering that question. Yay. And back to you, Doug. Is that really fair? I mean, he's a robot. He'll always get the answer right. Not if it's a question about the human condition. Robots are known for their complete lack of empathy and emotion. He'd fail a question like that for sure. Uh, okay, if you say so. All right, would you bow your head with me to pray and finish up today's lesson? Great. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the story of Jonah. 
We relate a lot to this prophet who didn't always do things perfectly, certainly not the first time around. We all need second chances, so we thank you that you are a God of grace and compassion. Lord, would you be with us this week, forgive us for the times that we get it wrong, and help us by your Holy Spirit to get it right. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everyone. I hope to see you back here again. Until then, bye bye Hey, kids. If you'd like to do some of our activity sheets, head on over to faithfield.com slash curriculum.